Hi, I'm Cooper Carnahan, an IT solutions integrator here at NXP, and today I'm going to be walking you through the out-of-box experience for the SLN TLHMI IoT, NXP's turnkey solution for smart human-machine interfaces, which supports touchscreen capabilities, advanced graphical user interfaces, far-field voice control support, as well as cutting-edge face and gesture recognition functionality, all running locally on the MCU itself. Without further ado, let's get started. When you first open the box, you find a few things inside, including a packing list paper, a USB-C cable, and of course, your SLM TLHMI IoT kit itself. With the kit out of the box, be sure to remove the plastic lens covers from both cameras. While these covers help protect the cameras during transit, they can cause issues with the performance of the face recognition capabilities of the kit. So the first thing you'll notice when you plug in the kit is a startup screen which highlights the currently selected application, which of course in our case is the coffee machine. After a brief delay or by touching the screen, we can proceed onto the coffee machine startup splash screen. Uh, this acts like any traditional splash screen you might see in another application. Uh, the main thing to note here is the language selector in the top right hand corner of the screen, where we can choose one of four currently supported languages, which includes English, Chinese, German and French. Uh, once we've selected the language that we want, uh, we can either touch the screen to move on, or we can use the wake word, hey NXP, to move on to the home screen. The home screen lets us, is where we can actually customize and configure our coffee selection. Uh, you'll notice in the top right, of course, we've got that same language dropdown selector. On uh, choosing a new language, we'll actually update the on-screen text uh, and the voice recognition model. Uh, and of course, all the on-screen text matches uh, the supported voice commands out of the box. Uh, for our case, we'll use English, uh, but you'll notice we can select the size, type, and strength of the coffee by either using on-screen touch commands or by using voice commands. So I can either touch the type of coffee I want, or I can say medium to select uh, the size of coffee I want, and I can say strong to select the strength, showing that we have capabilities for both traditional touch controls uh, as well as hands-free voice commands. Uh, the last thing to notice on this screen is on the left side of the screen, we've got a camera preview pane uh, that helps me line up my face properly so that the face recognition will work. Uh, and once my face has been detected, the on-screen bounding box will change colors. So red currently indicates that a face has been detected, but we don't know whose face we're looking at. We've never seen this user before. Uh, the color blue is used to indicate that, hey, we don't see any face at all. Uh, and the color green, as we'll see later, is used to indicate that, hey, this is a face we know, uh, we know what their coffee order is. So once that's done, we can actually say start, and a coffee brewing animation will play just to emulate a real coffee being brewed. Save your coffee selection, confirm or cancel. Now that we've made our coffee, we can choose to either save or delete uh, our coffee selection. So we'll say confirm, which will actually associate that coffee order with our face. So that the next time we open up the coffee machine by saying, hey, NXP. Another one, cappuccino, confirm or cancel. Having our face recognized will actually reorder the same coffee that we had before. We can either respond positively, which will go through the same brewing animation, or we can select something entirely new and update our, our saved coffee for later. Uh, lastly, we can also delete our user entirely by saying delete user and it will delete my face from the database entirely. So that's, that's the coffee machine in a nutshell, all the out-of-box features from graphics display to touch controls, face recognition, and voice control. Now let's move on to the elevator. We can select the elevator application by flipping the kit over to the back and pressing and holding the switch to push button while we power on the kit. Once we do so, you'll notice the startup screen indicates the elevator application instead of the coffee machine as our currently selected application. We can touch on the screen to go immediately to the elevator home screen. Unlike the coffee machine, the elevator has no splash screen, so we're immediately taken to a screen that shows on the right a traditional elevator panel layout with floor selection buttons, door open and door close buttons, as well as an alarm uh, button. 
In the top left-hand corner of the screen is some static information uh, used to mimic what you might see in a real elevator, uh, looking to take up some of that screen real estate. And finally, in the bottom left-hand corner of the panel uh, is the same language drop-down selector we saw in the coffee machine app with support for English, Chinese, German, and French commands, uh, as well as face recognition status indicators and a voice recognition status indicator. By default, voice recognition is disabled, uh, but we can enable it using either the Hey NXP wake word uh, or voice commands will also be enabled uh, whenever a face is being saved or a face is recognized. You'll notice the icon changes to green once a face, uh, once voice recognition is enabled. Now I can say fourth floor uh, and a brief transit animation will play indicating the elevator is traveling. Save your floor selection. Confirm or cancel. And now because my face was detected, indicated by the red status icon on the bottom, uh, I can either respond positively saying confirm and my face will be saved to the face database. Now, because there's no splash screen, uh, we have a brief 10 or so second May timeout delay. to the fourth floor. Confirm or cancel. The elevator floor number will revert back to one. Uh, and once that happens, then uh, an on-screen prompt will be displayed asking if we want to return to our saved floor. Uh, we can either respond positively uh, or negatively to travel to that floor or choose something else entirely. We can also, like the coffee machine, delete a face by saying delete user or pressing the icon on screen. Finally, uh, if, you've ever, if you're ever confused about what commands are available uh, with the elevator application, you can always go to the help screen, which indicates the voice commands supported for the currently enabled uh, language. So for example, you can see the English voice commands, uh, but if I select Chinese, uh, you'll see it updates the list to show the commands supported for that language as well. And that's all there is to the elevator application. Uh, now that we've gone through both the coffee machine and elevator out-of-box applications, let's go ahead and get up and running with the out-of-box developer experience so that we can start developing applications of our own. The TLHMI was designed with developers in mind, coming with hardware reference materials, software source code, and integration with a variety of different tools to help accelerate the development process. In this section, we'll walk through the process of downloading the source code for the coffee machine and elevator out-of-box demos, and then we'll import these projects into MCU Expresso IDE so that you can start modifying, flashing, and debugging your own projects. First things first, we need to make sure that we have MCU Expresso IDE installed. Currently, the SLN TLHMI IoT out of box software is only supported by version 11.5.0, so it's important to make sure that we install this version and not something else. Once the IDE has been installed, we can now download a compatible SDK package for our board. Because the SLN TLHMI IoT uses the iDynamics RT117H processor, we will use the same SDK package designed for the iDynamics RT1170 EVK. We can install this SDK package from within the IDE itself. To do so, simply select the Install MCU Expresso SDKs button on the home page, or search for this option in the search panel. Now, search for 1170 in the board filter search box that appears in the SDK installation panel. Be sure to uncheck the Show Latest option, because version 2.12.0 and later are incompatible with version 11.5.0 of MCU Expresso IDE. With the options that are displayed, select SDK version 2.11.1 for the 1170 EVK and choose Install. After agreeing to the license agreement, the SDK will begin installing, which should take roughly a minute or so. Upon success, you'll be able to find the installed SDK package displayed in the Installed SDKs panel found at the bottom of the IDE. Finally, we need to download and import the software source code projects for the coffee machine and elevator example apps. The source code for both of these projects can be found on the GitHub page for the SLN TLHMI IoT found at the link shown on screen. From here, if you have Git installed, you can simply clone the repository or download a zip package instead. For our purposes, we'll go ahead and clone the project using Git, but the next several steps will be largely the same if you download a zip archive instead. With the project cloned onto our machine, reopen MCU Expresso IDE and navigate to File, Import Projects from File System, and click Directory if using an unzipped folder, or Archive if using a zipped archive file. Next. Find and click on the folder or zip archive you downloaded in the previous step. Now, uncheck all but the bootloader project, 
as well as the CM4, CM7, and LVGL VG Lite Lib projects for both the coffee machine and elevator demos. Upon completion, you'll see each of these seven folders displayed in the Project Explorer panel in the top left corner of the IDE window. From here, you can use one of these two projects as a starting point for your own application and modify, build, and debug any changes that you make. Before we close out our brief introduction to the development experience for the Smart HMI solution, we'll also import the coffee machine and elevator projects in NXP's GUI Guider drag and drop editor to show how we can quickly and easily prototype and test new UI layouts and configurations from the comfort of our host machine before ever testing on real hardware. First, download and install GUI Guider version 1.3.1. Newer versions of the tool will work, but you may encounter issues getting the simulator to work properly. With GUI Guider downloaded and installed, open the application and click on the Import a Local Project button, and navigate once more to the location where you downloaded the source code package. From here, we can choose to open either the coffee machine or elevator application folder. Select the application of your choosing, click on the GUI Guider subfolder, and select the GUI Guider project file for the application you're interested in. Lastly, we need to extract the LVGL and LVGL simulator files found in this folder. Once we've done that, we can use GUI Getter's Run Code button to simulate the UI on our host PC. As a developer, you can modify and test out your UI changes using the simulator, and once you're satisfied with your changes, you can click the Export Code button to export this code to MCU Expresso IDE and begin testing these changes on real hardware. And that wraps up our brief introduction to the SLN TLHMI IoT out of box experience. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of the documentation you can find on our website and hosted through our GitHub page. We can't wait to see how the Smart HMI solution helps you integrate new and exciting functionality into your designs.